All right, everybody, let's let's start. Um, we see people are still joining, but anyway, let's kick off. Welcome, everybody, to our first webinar uh, hosted by Navy OCI. We're very excited that you're all here, most and foremost, because we have a very interesting topic prepared for you today. Today, as you all know, we're going to speak about uh, heavy model training on GPU cloud infrastructure. And with us today, we have an amazing panel. Our guests are proud clients uh, from Recraft AI, Anna Veronika Dragush, the founder and CEO of Recraft, and Pavel Astyakov, who is the head of ML for Recraft. Say hello to everybody. Uh, these people have been developing a pretty promising and amazing startup in the generative AI field uh, with a solution that offers AI graphic design uh, aimed for professionals. And uh, from, sorry, from our side, it's going to be myself, Andrew Gorbanov, who is the sales enablement lead for Nebios, and of course, Livon Sarkisian, who is a solution architect lead for Nebios CI, and he will cover uh, the more technical intricacies and uh, questions for uh, our platform. Now, how we're going to build today's discussion is as follows. First, I'm going to start with a brief recap of what Nebios CI is. Then we're going to meet Recraft as a startup and as a company, and uh, Anna Vranika will take the stage. Afterwards, uh, Pavel will tell us about their foundational model and the challenges and solutions that they found on Nebio CI, after which Livon will focus on our perspective of the same training experience uh, with Recraft. Then we're gonna do a quick uh, summary do a quick uh, Q&A session. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat uh, or you can wait until the end and we can have a live discussion as well. So without further ado, let's uh, kick off. We have a pretty interesting session today. So starting with Nebio CI, what is Nebio CI? Nebio CI is a GPU cloud platform uh, that is designed specifically for AI workloads, uh, from data labeling to inference. Uh, why did we build this? Uh, well, because initially we had experience in developing general purpose public clouds in several countries. And uh, we had experience in developing ML and AI solutions within those clouds as well. And given the rise of AI that I'm sure you're all familiar with, at some point we thought that we understand our user base. We understand the value that we can provide to that user base. And that's why we publicly launched in November, 2023, Nebio CI as a GPU cloud provider with its data center in Finland. Uh, that's very green. That's very powerful, which is uh, super because it's not only good for the environment, but it also allows us to control the costs and offer the GPU resources at a competitive cost, which is of course great for everybody, especially for AI startups, because we know that these things can be pretty costly. We partnered with NVIDIA, so we have access to the latest cutting edge technology in the AI sphere. Um, and uh, we're truly a global company, even though we have only four offices at the moment uh, across Europe, our customer base is truly global. We have users in the US, Africa, the Gulf region, Asia, and so on. Now I've mentioned our data center. It's not only, oops, I've mentioned our data center and it's not only a data center. It's actually the 16th supercomputer in the world, which is actually a milestone for us and makes us really, really, really proud uh, because it was assembled, developed, uh, by our hardware team. So another important thing about Nebio CI is that we fully control uh, everything from hardware to the software that we produce, the cloud services. And obviously having the 16th supercomputer in the world as our underlying infrastructure with thousands of H100 GPUs connected together with infinite band, uh, this just makes this a very good solution for model training with tens of billions of parameters which uh, we will discuss later today. But as you probably all know, training is an important, but it's just one part of the full ML life cycle. So of course we aim to be, and already you can see 
uh, that uh, we are more than just a GPU cloud. We're a platform that allows our users to uh, work with us throughout the full ML life cycle from data labeling to inference. We've built managed services like managed DBs, managed Kubernetes. We can do managed Slurm, all that. So um, we have more than 50 publishers and uh, solutions on our marketplace, um, et cetera. So we're truly an end-to-end -end platform and we're constantly developing. Again, I'll emphasize that we only launched in November. So the, uh, the uh, pace of growth is actually quite high. Now, without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Anna Veronika, uh, the CEO and founder of Recraft, um, who has also created Cat Boost in 2017. And uh, Recraft is actually a very, very, very promising startup in the generative AI uh, field, not only because the design generative AI market is projected to grow from, for, uh, from $400 million right now, to over $7 billion in 2032, but also because Recraft is one of the uh, only companies, I would say, that has created a foundational model. And then, Veronika, I definitely want you to elaborate on that. Why would a image generation platform need a foundational model? And of course, we want to congratulate them uh, on a recent uh, round A investment led by Kosla Ventures in Silicon Valley, which is the seventh uh, biggest venture fund by uh, Total Assets Managed that have previously invested in companies like uh, OpenAI, GitLab, and the backing of Recraft is actually amazing. It's uh, also Nat Friedman, who was the CEO of uh, GitHub, uh, Elad Jill, who has invested in Airbnb and Stripe, that's that all looks very promising. Anna Veronika, uh, giving the stage to you, please explain your product, why it's so interesting, and why do you need a foundational model? Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for the congratulations over the round. We are over the over the moon with that. Uh, so yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, let me. Uh, my name is Anna Veronika. I'm the founder. Wait, I can control the slides. <laughs> I'm the founder and CEO of Recraft, uh, and. Uh, I wanted so today. I want to explain you what Recraft is, what is it that we are doing, uh, who we are doing it for, and tell you about our model that we have trained using Nervios. So uh, first, uh, the image generation space uh, in 2023, last year, has just exploded. Uh, people started using AI for all kinds of tasks. Mostly it was for, for uh, personal use, but also people started using AI for professional use as well. Uh, people are generating beautiful portraits, uh, beautiful detailed illustrations. Um, so what's our place here? For, for professional design, you actually don't need those kinds of illustrations that you are used to see in Midjourney and in other AI image generators. Uh, you don't really need this highly detailed, close to realistic human portraits. What is really needed in professional design space is uh, simplistic photos, simplistic illustrations that do not have any do not have any errors. So they do have correct number of figures, correct human figures. So the quality is very important. Uh, the illustrations are in sets so that you can use the same style in your brand in different places. Uh, and those things, they are not solved by anyone. So we, we understood that uh, this, this needs to be solved if we want to, pr to produce uh, graphics for professional use cases. With that, uh, we decided to train. Uh, we decided to train a model to solve this problem. Uh, our uh, first tries were fine tuning of existing foundation models, uh, but and and we did have good results with that. So we could produce uh, different useful styles. Uh, we could do something with sets, but it's just impossible to to teach uh, stable diffusion or any existing open source models to produce uh, anatomically correct, uh, cor correct human figures, to produce correct number of fingers. So it's just impossible to teach the model to do something that the model cannot do from the start. We can, we can teach it to not produce valid answers at all, but we cannot help it to produce correct valid answers. Because of that reason, we decided to train our own model from scratch. And the main tasks here were 
uh, high quality because in graphic design, uh, the designers cannot compromise quality. They really need high quality imagery. That was the first thing. The second thing, uh, visual consistency. We needed the model to be able to produce images in the same styles in sets. And the third was the style. So we need to produce some useful styles that can be uh, that can be used in things like uh, social media packaging uh, or brand support and growing of a brand. By the way, starting from this slide, all the illustration that you see in the presentation and all images that you see in the presentation, they are produced with Recraft. So with that, we decided to train our own model. And we didn't have a lot of resources for that or a lot of time, uh, but uh, we did it from the first try. So we have trained the model, we had one shot, and we ended up with a very good result. Our model that we have trained is order of magnitude larger than uh, the existing open source analogous, which are stable diffusion and playground. Uh, and the model is much more powerful than those ones. Uh, we have done we have done a bunch of benchmarks. So we did we did benchmarks internally uh, on our own data sets. We have uh, compared ourselves to all the competitions. So we kind of have this order internally. We know where each uh, where each model stands, uh, and uh, in very rough terms, it's uh, the, the the picture is like that. There's Midjourney and Dali who are on the top. Then there's this huge gap, and then there's everyone else. So we did the internal benchmarks. Uh, comparing our model versus, versus all the competition. Uh, and uh, the model is on the top. So it is at least as good as Midjourney and Dali. And in many, uh, in many parameters, in many aspects, uh, it is better. Let me explain the benchmark right now. Uh, as far as the private benchmark, we have done the public benchmark. So the, the way that uh, people that we in research community, uh, people usually compare image generation models. Uh, we have used this large data set of prompts. It's uh, 1, 000, uh, around 1,700 uh, different image description for which we are generating images. And then we compare them, uh, we, we uh, compare those images uh, with human labeling. The results are the following. Uh, here I'm showing uh, the answers of the comparison with me, Journey, and Dali, because they are the biggest players, and also with the open source analogous, like stable diffusion and playground. Um, in ChatGPT and in Bing, we, we don't really know which model is used. Uh, the, the guess is they are using some mix of DALI 3, Vivid Standard, Natural, and uh, Vivid HD. So it's some mix of those uh, four models. Uh, comparing with DALI, out of those four models, we are, win we are winning by far two of them. And with two others, we are just very close in terms of general quality. Uh, so we are super, super close to, to Dali, uh, a little bit better uh, in those cases. And Midjourney, uh, there's just one model. Uh, so we are winning our Midjourney. And uh, we are by far winning stable diffusion and playground model. Now, what are the places where we are winning and where we are losing? Uh, we know that we are winning the anatomy, so we are producing better human figures and number, uh, human figures and number of fingers, things like that. That's one thing. Other thing that is uh, very strong in Recraft, we are strong in producing correct scenes in terms of structure, counts of things, and relations of objects. Here is an example of that. Uh, the description is three yellow balls and two red boxes on a table. This is the image produced by Recraft, and those are the images produced by everyone else. So other models uh, are not there yet. Um, we are doing a decent job on this particular thing. In other, in other example here, a closet without clothes, uh, you can see here uh, the result of Recraft. Those two results are from two models of DALI. It's also closed without calls. Uh, but DALI, both DALI and Midjourney, they have this problem that sometimes images are cropped. Recraft does not have this problem. So all other models just cannot get this, and it's because of the without word. Because the relation um, between the, uh, the um, objects uh, in the scene is not trivial. Recraft is doing a good job on that. I don't think that Recraft is doing a good job on is producing texts. It is definitely not perfect yet. So it would not produce uh, perfect texts uh, in all the cases, but it's kind of uh, better than uh, than the analogous. This, this one is correct. Now, where we are doing worse, uh, we are definitely losing on complex style engineering. Uh, if you give uh, if you uh, give Recraft a complex prompt where uh, you are saying it's uh, 
from training on art station in style of this and that uh, illustrator um, HD or high quality whatever uh, you will get a better result in Mid Journey or or uh, Dali than in Recut and the reason for that is we are not really tuning uh, the model for that we don't want people to explain styles with words we want people to explain styles with images first we have this rich library of useful professional styles where you can just select a style uh, select a color palette and produce images in this specific style without any prompt engineering and second you can just create your own style from an image or in a list of images now let me show you some examples of how it looks like this is a this is a busy street of people so it's a very short simple prompt in the green style and you get those kinds of illustration with very simple prompts and you get consistent illustration in the same style if you want uh, like if you are using different prompts it will be same style but different scenes something that is practically impossible to get from me journey on dali this example is plastic 3d style super useful for social media or for websites uh, or for uh, for illustration of, of a web app. Uh, this is just the prompt ramen. This is manufacturing in the UK. This is photorealism, a uh, tour guide in a hat. Right now, we just have one style for photorealism, but we might add uh, more. This is a group of office worker is sleeping on the couch. Uh, here uh, it's not just vector style it's a proper vector illustration uh, it's another uh, another strong thing about the model that we have built and this one is background interview so those are the examples of the styles that we provide from the from the start of the library of styles but you can also create your own style you just use one image or several images in a style and you get a lot of uh, and you can generate as many images is, as you want in the same style for your for your brand here's an example how it works for notion so let's say you have this one illustration one notion illustration you use it as a style and then you you create illustrations in this particular style helps you to grow your brand there's also a uh, other things about about our model uh, that I want to mention that are uh, different from all other models uh, out there, and this is the control that we give to our users, the control over the results. When you are building, when you are building an image, or when you are building uh, any kind of uh, graphics in Recraft, you not only use prompts and styles, you can also use different controls. You can uh, use level of details and switch between primitive illustration or extremely detailed illustration. You can create variations of the same image, like you can create uh, a, a dog uh, very similar to a cat, uh, also help, helps you with sets. You can just experiment with styles and uh, uh, remix them in Recraft. And, uh, and there's a lot of stuff more, uh, like color palettes, brand colors that you can use not only in illustration, but also in photography. Um, being able to create whole sets just with one click. Uh, this is all built in uh, into the model because we know that this is necessary for professional design tasks. Uh, with that, uh, that was the overview of what we are doing. Uh, basically, we are, we are providing a workflow and the model for graphic designers to build professional de professional design materials we care about the quality of the results and we provide high quality and we care about all those aspects that are necessary to to be successful in this area that is the overview about what is it that we are doing and for whom and with that uh it's uh, it's time to get a little bit more technical and uh, talk about the uh, technology stack that we have uh, and uh, about uh, the way how we have built this model in Nervius. Thank you very much for, for your insight. So if I understood correctly, it's more about providing the outputs and the control of the outputs to the users uh, to get consistent images and so on. That's why you need the foundational model. 
So the reason to get the foundational model was mostly because of the of the quality of the imagery. As I said, it's not possible to fine tune stable diffusion model or any other open source or openly available model to fine tune it to produce anatomically correct results or the with the, the results without any kind of artifacts. That Amazing. that was the, the main reason to do that. Yeah, understood. All right, let's uh, dive deeper into the tech. I'm I'm sure everybody's uh, very uh, interested in that as well. Bio, yeah, over to you then. The most colorful presentation I think I've ever seen, and it's so dull to move to tech, but let's do it. Let's go to the back end of all this. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pavel Ostyakov, and I'm head of machine learning in Recraft. So I'm going to briefly introduce uh, how we train this model on Nebius and particularly what kind of challenges we faced and uh, what were the solutions uh, uh, and what we achieved at the end. So how the training infrastructure looks from our perspective. Uh, so we have uh, some massive amount of hardware and we have to manage it somehow. So one of the standard ways how to do this is to use the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so here Nebios provides uh, like a managed Kubernetes. Uh, so they deploy automatically all the nodes, uh, like drivers uh, for the GPUs, for the network and so on. And from our side, uh, we just write like some PyTorch training code, we, which we typically uh, do as um, uh, deploying engineers and use some kind of uh, um, uh, engines are built upon on the Kubernetes. Uh, in our case, it's uh, Kubeflow, uh, which automatically manages uh, uh, the creation of uh, pods, uh, the allocation of required resources, uh, and so on. So, in terms of hardware, we have like uh, like several numbers or like uh, dozens or hundreds of numbers of nodes, of GPU nodes, and we need to somehow communicate between them. In practice, uh, of course, as uh, the others, we use the back propagation algorithms to train our neural network, and it requires to aggregate the gradients of the network parameters across all of the workers in the cluster. Uh, and in order to implement it, uh, actually, you need to uh, know the all the hardware stuff, how it works, uh, so that there is a, a very efficient network called InfiniBand. There are a bunch of technologies from the NVIDIA, like GPU Direct, RDMA, uh, which all tend to provide the fastest possible uh, training for you. Uh, but the thing is that uh, in order to utilize all these technologies, uh, you can just simply rely on one library called NCCL, which is NVIDIA uh, Collective Communication Library. And in theory, it should automatically handle all this stuff. Uh, so it should automatically choose the right as the most efficient algorithm based on the topology of the network of, uh, of your cluster. Uh, and it just provides like a high level uh, API for the um, uh, operations like uh, reduction of gradients from all the nodes or broadcasting parameters and so on. And the modern frameworks, uh, which are used for training like PyTorch, TensorFlow, et cetera, uh, they uh, all just use the NCCL internally and uh, just call all these functions from the library. But the thing is that in practice, uh, it doesn't work, uh, I mean, magically. So we faced a bunch of issues when trying to do the distributed training. Uh, I will ju I'll just put some of the uh, errors here. The thing is that the um, NCCL and also the uh, InfiniBand uh, related libraries, uh, they typically provide some simple uh, error message, uh, typically like one or a couple of lines uh, from which you should somehow understand what happened and uh, uh, how to fix this error. 
So first of all, SV, SVivo actually is one of the first customers in Nebios before uh, it's even publicly was launched. So we, we started to test the infrastructure and uh, uh, try to make the training of our network work. Uh, we faced the issues that the training couldn't just start uh, due to some uh, reasons. Uh, or even after we were able to manage it, it was just extremely slow. Uh, our first test just showed that it's like eight times uh, slower compared to the ideal scenario uh, where the network isn't just a bottleneck. So uh, the engineers from Nebios uh, actually helped us a lot. I mean, we just had a communication in the chat and uh, uh, every day or even every hour, uh, we just uh, send them some um, uh, errors that we faced uh, or some issues and they communicated with us and helped us a lot to fix them. Some of these errors, they came from the uh, hardware, from the infrastructure. Some of them just uh, came from the implementation, uh, uh, particularly from the NCCA library. Uh, but quickly, uh, the uh, uh, efficiency of the network was fixed and uh, it just became the network itself became four times faster, which resulted in like six time uh, training speed up uh, compared to what we had uh, before. But the major issue actually, even after all these fixes was that uh, after a while, uh, after we started the training, it started hanging. Uh, and these hangs, they occurred uh, absolutely randomly sometimes uh, after a few days of training, sometimes after a few hours, or sometimes just instantly uh, before it's, it's even started. And uh, we got a bunch of different uh, errors from the uh, NCCL, uh, and the workflow was like, uh, I just opened the logs and see, okay, we got the event, local catastrophic error. So what does it mean? Uh, it's, it, it was really hard to debug for us. And actually in this particular problem, we are not alone. And if we go to the NCCL GitHub repo and just uh, search for the issues with the word hand, uh, we can find more than 100 of issues. So many people actually face similar problems. Uh, but the thing that is that this all, all these problems, uh, they have, have different reasons. And in order to understand these reasons and in order to fix them, uh, you need a quick dedicated support from the infrastructure. Uh, because from our side, it, it, it was really hard to, uh, to, to understand just what, what's happening. And yeah, one of the funny responses in the NCCL uh, GitHub issue was that uh, a, a guy said that uh, some uh, random timeouts uh, could be caused by a flap and clink. And uh, after the infrastructure becomes more stable, uh, typically all this issue resolved. I don't know uh, whether it's true or not, uh, just some uh, funny fact. Yeah, another problem uh, that we also faced, uh, actually one of the other problems, is that uh, some GPUs, uh, they may fail. And uh, I mean, this is somehow the expected uh, problem because uh, when you have a massive amount of hardware, uh, the probability of some failures uh, is increasing. So. Uh, in this situation, uh, the problem is to identify this uh, better if you can do this automatically and uh, resolve it uh, in order just not to uh, waste our uh, computational resources. Uh, so what we did, we implemented the automatic alerts. Uh, so our training jobs, uh, they... Uh, just send some heartbeats during each training step. And if we, uh, not re we are not receiving the heartbeats uh, after some predefined amount of time, uh, we got a notification in Slack 
So at least we know that something has happened and we may dive deeply into the problem and start uh, fixing it. Uh, yeah, so actually there were much more uh, hardware and infrastructure related issues and, and also the implementation related issues, uh, which unfortunately I just don't have time to uh, explain right now, but uh, I just want to share some uh, some achievements that uh, we were able to get. The first one is that the uh, the average bandwidth of the network, it increased significantly basically four times. So it allowed us to train the uh, large models and uh, the network now basically isn't the bottleneck for training. Uh, also many of the hardware related and cluster configuration related problems were solved. And now the system is much more stable. And as a result, uh, we successfully train our fund foundation model, which has 20 billion of parameters. And it, as Anna already said, that demonstrates state-of-the-art performance compared to all the major competitors. And what are the key takeaways uh, from this experience uh, of uh, training large models? Uh, so first of all, the proper alerts, uh, they has to be implemented, uh, have to be implemented in advance uh, in order to help identifying the occurred issues. Also, the logging should always be enabled to maximize the troubleshooting capabilities. Unfortunately, not all the libraries provides the uh, like uh, uh, the good logs uh, and especially the, the, the essential libraries like uh, NCCL, but anyway. Um, and also uh, in order to successfully train some large model, it's not just about the amount of hardware that you have. Uh, it's also about how you manage this hardware, uh, whether you waste some time during the uh, hardware issues uh, uh, or the training is implemented in a very efficient way. So this was a really uh, interesting experience for us. And uh, I think the, the major key takeaway, takeaway from uh, all of this is that uh, a fast dedicated support from the infrastructure engineers is extremely important here. And uh, compared to some other, especially if, uh, compared to some large cloud providers. Uh, here we had a uh, very good experience. So we just had a direct communication with uh, the engineers. And after something happened, we just uh, received the uh, solutions uh, or feedback uh, instantly. So I think uh, this is the end of my presentation. So thank you, everyone. I will thank you for, for uh, doing a deep dive into your foundational model training uh, challenges and uh, the takeaways. Now, since every metal has two sides, uh, let's listen to Livon, and he will provide uh, the same experience, but only from our perspective. Livon, over to you. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Livon. I'm a solutions architect for NBSAI, and uh, by God, like... Uh, I, I really liked Anna Veronica's uh, presentation in terms of like it was probably uh, the most powerful thing I've seen for maybe in the history of any presentation I've seen. But uh, the, the things that Pop Pavel shares basically hit me hard because these MCCL errors are basically haunting me in my sleep uh, since we first launched the product. So uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about like the, as as Andrea already mentioned the other side of the metal. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about how Recraft basically started with us uh, as a early, early adopter. As Andrea already mentioned, we launched publicly on November 8th, I think. But uh, Re the truth is Recraft and some other early adopters were with us much, much earlier. They uh, decided to invest in us and put their faith in us much earlier. And of course, they uh, got both the pros and the cons of it. And I'm going to talk about this whole situation as like how I decided to call it an advent calendar of challenging realizations. Uh, yeah, the previous name was a little bit different, but we, I think, decided to uh, market it a little bit better. So uh, 
And I would like to talk about this uh, advent calendar of challenging realizations, uh, how you usually approach a use case. You have the problem, uh, you have the realization, and you probably have the solution. So uh, the first and the foremost, uh, like, let's let's uh, roll back to a little bit to February 2023. And we had, like, the problem. We had a team of, the problem is not something that is an issue, but something we really want to solve, like a mathematical problem. And we had, like, a team of really talented uh, engineers, software developers, et cetera. We wanted to launch a GPU cloud because we saw a great business and technical opportunity for it. We had a lot of experience under our belt building public cloud uh, in different public clouds in different regions. And uh, a lot of people who actually like founded very, very high loading services. And we we're like, yeah, uh, let's probably try and launch uh, this GPU cloud. It will be a very specific cloud for very specific workloads like ML and AI uh, computationals. And let's start simple. We uh, used to work uh, with platforms that had more than uh, 60 services. Uh, what could be a problem of launching very fast a service that has compute storage network, maybe orchestration and uh, key value store like object storage. But the realization was actually that uh, it's not that easy. We thought that launching a public cloud for the third time in our uh, careers as uh, builders would be three times faster. And boy, we were wrong. So uh, basically, these are just like the outtakes of the uh, endless uh, motivational messages we we sent to Recraft uh, in particular about, yes, yeah, sorry, we decided to launch like on the date X, it's going to turn up to date, date, date 2X because this, this, and this. We have bug here, we have bug there, et cetera, et cetera. And we realized that we were actually very humbled and we should not like treat uh, creating a niche, a very specific tailored cloud as something easier than a general purpose cloud. And the outcome actually uh, came only in June 2023. So actually, uh, in February, we thought it would be a fast victory. But uh, we our deployment, even though we had a lot of like, uh, technology and co code base there, only in June 2023, we managed to launch the MVP with basic services, which was basically compute engine with software and hardware platforms tailored for GPU uh, some storage and network. And we definitely ditched Kubernetes and object storage because, well, reasons that probably I will cover a little bit in, in, this, in, the, in the next case. So another problem struck us in May 2023. So the problem was uh, that uh, uh, what we needed here is not only the GPUs. Yeah, we managed to reach out to Recraft in particular, uh, and say, hey, guys, try out our uh, state-of-the-art H100 NVIDIA GPUs in our uh, custom-built racks with our like, virtual machines on our own compute engine. Uh, They're like, yeah, it works pretty well. And now we have a uh, multi-billion uh, parameter model to uh, prepare and train on. They're like, yeah, for that, you'll probably need some orchestration layer. And uh, we decided that we run work Kubernetes workloads for many, many years. Uh, we faced any kind of uh, workload that actually there could be, including uh, machine learning and AI workloads. Like, what would be the problem to basically fetch them to manage Kubernetes for multi-node training out of the box? We have a great uh, fully managed Kubernetes that is battle tested. What could go wrong? Let's do it like right away. And everything went wrong because uh, starting from May to July 13th, working every single day trying to give them this orchestration layer specifically tailored, it was a challenge. We had an assumption that our production-ready managed Kubernetes was also ML workload-ready, and we were so wrong. There were a lot of very specific things, a lot of very specific uh, requirements in terms of uh, network operating, GPU operating, uh, specific MTUs, uh, storage uh, speeds, uh, downloading and uploading all the data sets from like well-known places. All of that, the devil was in the details, and only uh from like when we realized that what we had out of the box is not working 
we took a heroic spec st a step of tinkering it for basically four days nonstop. We managed to write a multi-node training ready Terraform module and made some really big updates to our managed Kubernetes engine on the underlay itself to basically start this multi-node training. And finally, Recraft and some other early adopters said, yeah, this 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 thing works. But actually, like with the managed Kubernetes, our first uh, early adopter was Recraft and I cannot thank them all, uh, more for like being there for us. So yeah, we have the trade, we have the platform ready for like GPU workloads. We have multi-node training for, uh, uh, we have the orchestration layer for training, but there is other thing. So when we started training, we understood, and we basically understood it from the get-go from July when we started uh, working with Recraft uh, in just talk in just talks that. Yeah, actually our multi-node large scale uh, training would be as good as our network because this will be probably the biggest bottleneck. And we need to achieve network performance good enough for large scale multi-node training. There, we understood it'll still be the biggest bottleneck, but at least we can provide something that is industry uh, led. And we have a lot of, again, engineering talent and overlay and underlay networks. We have a lot of experience with it. We're like, yeah, we can deliver this out of the box using the uh, network we already have, correct? No, of course not. It was, again, pretty, pretty bad. Uh, when we first launched our first uh, batches of training on our managed Kubernetes, the speed was laughable. It was something like 24, you can see from the error, it was 24 megabytes per second. This is something your grandma's router in her apartment would probably give you as a bandwidth to the laptop. So yeah, this was awful. And what we decided to do is just jump on this thing. And uh, we understood that there is no going back. And we have to adapt to our custom-made hardware. We have to adapt uh, the InfiniBand network, uh, gracefully provided by NVIDIA and Mellanox. And by November 3rd, it was probably actually the biggest sleep we had to do because network is hard. Again, I won't get, get into detail. This is not the topic on this, of this webinar, but network is far hard. We managed to launch our first InfiniBand uh, fabric with 400 gigabit per second interfaces spawning our H100 GPU fleet. Uh, please notice it was like five days before the soft launch of our platform where we would start with not only the early adopters, but some companies that were already waiting in queue to come and join us uh, with their workloads. Yeah, and with all that, I would say we were all set for this like uh, training uh, workloads of our customers, but there is also one thing that we really had to think of in retrospect, starting again, winding back to February. So uh, Andrea already mentioned there were a full stack cloud and a full stack cloud means that we own everything. We own everything from physical recs, assembly, uh, data centers, we design and build data centers ourselves, uh, uh, and we provide everything up to platform and software as a service solutions. So having a full stack cloud sounds awesome. It is very good for your business and for your margins, but it also means that you have to provide expertise on every single layer of this, of this cake, from hardware to user environments. And we thought, yeah, uh, when we, we always did it with our public platforms, and probably we can also do this uh, with very specific niche solutions like ML and AI workloads. Yeah, what could go wrong? Of course, everything. Uh, because AI and ML workloads are basically witchcraft. Uh, I started to like work with this maybe like a half a year ago. Thankfully, we have a lot of people uh, 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 inside our company. We have also a lot of dedicated LLM people. We have a lot of dedicated ML and AI engineers who helped us out or we couldn't make it. But we basically, uh, these layers and layers of knowledge that was not taught in school, it was not something that you ever touched if you're not a researcher, if you're not a uh, ML engineer, not even a data scientist, I would say ML engineer or a researcher. And uh, basically, this is like uh, this NCCL errors that haunt me in my dreams. They actually can be spawned ev anywhere on every layer, on the layer of uh, the uh, application, on the layer of managed Kubernetes, on the layer of compute, overlay, underlay network, physical hosts. And uh, this was a very, very big challenge as a whole throughout the spawn of our whole production. And 
the struggle still continues. Like we still have a lot to learn and uh, ML and AI workloads still humble us in a way. But uh, there was a turning point, uh, like not, not very long ago when we managed to basically debug an NCCL error running on a container on a, a managed Kubernetes node group up to overheating of transistors uh, in a physical server. And we basically did it in four or five days, something even even I think less. And the understanding that we can debug this layered cake from basically L7 to L1 meant that, yeah, we I think we can win this game. Yeah, and uh, so... Uh, the, the, uh, Amazing. The, yeah. No, no, go ahead, finish. Yeah, so the, the moral of the story here, I was actually asked to like, uh, is is there any outtakes on here? Uh, I would say the outtakes is uh, we got humbled. Uh, we basically went production ready in mere months. We built a ton of expertise and got pretty many sleepless nights uh, uh, on the way. Uh, but yeah, this understanding that we own everything now gives us a very solid understanding that in the future we would probably be ready to handle any uh, high performance workload that basically uh, falls on us. And our current customers that are running very, very big uh, uh, training uh, workloads yet prove our theory. Yeah, that's that. I, I, I think I'm done here, Andre. <laughs> Perfect, Leon. Thank you very much for the insight. Uh, for me, one of the key takeaways that I at least get from this is that it's always a bumpy ride. It's never, as in almost any case, uh, as we assume or plan from the beginning. But uh, the importance of transparency and working together really can uh, provide amazing results, both for us as a cloud provider and for our amazing users who continue to grow and hopefully will continue to grow as well. Now, let's jump to the questions because we have 12 minutes left in our webinar and I see a couple of questions. Let's start from not the pricing and long, the long-term inference use cases. We'll get to those as well. Let's start with the first one. Yeah, thank you for uh, changing the slide. Operation-wise, uh, of an e-commerce platform that offers payment solutions and increased revenue on corporate and a on corporate end and enables the user experience to help initiate purchases. How do you think Nebus and Recraft technologies could simultaneously effectively and humanly contribute to intended to such an intended project? Anybody of you uh, want to answer? E-commerce platform that offers payment solutions and an increased revenue on corporate and enables the user experience to help initiate purchases. Well, okay. uh, I I can I can tell tell about Recraft. If even this e-commerce platform, you ever need branded content, you are very welcome to go to Recraft AI and try to produce uh, branded images. Hopefully, it will work. Levon, anything from our side that you would like to add for e-commerce? Uh, honestly, I don't really fully understand the question. To be honest, so I would I would stick to Anna and say that she answered this question fully uh if yeah well, uh, well i can i can give more details uh, to d details probably to how it can be used in e-commerce uh, like you, there's a, there's a lot of users of in Recraft who are building something for e-commerce i'm not sure it's exactly relevant to this particular case but uh there are ways to like to work with images that that's uh, like removing background increasing the quality of the images uh, not only image generation, those are also parts of Recraft and people who are doing e-commerce, they often use those kinds of functionalities. Amazing. Uh, thank you very much for the insight. I assume retail and e-commerce is definitely one of your target markets for sure, if you're working with professionals. Um, all right, next question uh, from Tom, uh, TD Sanex, uh, NVIDIA, uh, asking about reselling possibilities and distribution. Well, Tom, uh, Leave your email, please uh, share it with us or we have it uh, since you've registered and we'll get back to you. There are definitely opportunities for both of us to work on. Uh, we'll have the right person reach out to you and you can discuss the details. Very interested in that. 
otherwise, uh, can you say something regarding the long-term contracts for inference use cases? Well, yes, uh, definitely. Our pricing policy, I will touch on a bit later uh, when we sum up. But uh, other than that, as we mentioned before, we aim to be an end-to-end -end platform from training and uh, data uh, preparation to inference, of course. And obviously, cost is an important issue. If you reserve resources, you will, of course, get discounts. We offer not only H100s, but we also offer A100 cards. We all we offer L4, L40 cards. Uh, we'll soon have the V100s coming in. And since we're an NVIDIA partner and we fully control uh, the cloud that we operate in and develop, uh, it's easier for us to adjust to the customer's needs. So uh, in case you would like to discuss inference, also uh, welcome. Uh, how can you compare your prices with AWS spot instances? Good question. Devon, first, do you want to talk about the spot versus non-spot instances from a technical yeah, perspective? Sure. I, think, I think, yeah, I think um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I can fully elaborate on the pricing model, but uh, like, you, you know, the numbers a little bit better, but uh, like taking into consideration the spot instances, basically the ones that you can rent for a limited amount of time, it doesn't guarantee you that the spot instances will persist and will basically be taken out as soon as like the uh, scheduling capacity of AWS decides that these uh, type of instances are uh, required, but they definitely boast a very, uh, very, very low prices depending on the demand. Uh, I can only say that uh, uh, spot instances for GPU training workloads is a fantastic solution. And we're not only looking into that, uh, I can say that uh, I can like share a little bit that soon you will see uh, similar options on our platform so uh we will definitely be able to compete and most likely i, I would give 90 plus percent on that beat the aws prices on the spot market but if we're talking about on demand or uh, uh reserved capacity there are two other uh like billing options that you can have with us uh, i think we definitely beat aws by a large margin and the big three in general right it's not that hard. Yes, we do. It, uh, and it's not because we're so cheap. It's just because they are so expensive. Um, good, good. Anyway, yes. Anyway, we are constantly developing our platform. We only launched in November. After that, we've already developed our managed services, published more than 50 images on our marketplace, um, received a notice of 16 supercomputer in the world. And we have, again, as I said before, I want to emphasize it, over 500 people working for this project with very heavy experience and a proven track record. So I have no um, concern and no doubt that uh, these services will continue to evolve. And since we control the full stack, it's easier again for us to adopt to the market's needs. And in case you say, hey, spot instances are what we need, reach out to us, let's discuss your use case. If the economic setup we're good to go. Basically, uh, we're, we're, we're the boss of our own platform. Now, um, do you consider some sort of partner business programs for companies that could promote your services? Yes, we do. People want to promote our services. We're always happy to discuss that. Who is the owner of the... We'll reach out with all the details um, and find win-win solutions. Who is the owner of the created content and who is responsible if legal copyright problems occur? Anna Veronika, a question for you. Legal and uh, and uh, uh, legal rights, copyrights. Yeah, so we we are working with with uh, we have a legal team, um, and we uh, we are making sure that we uh, follow the copyright law. Um, we do have a lot of different uh, data sources that we are training on, but we are not disclosing the we are not disclosing them. But we have the a responsible approach to the copyright law. Okay, great. Now, next question. It's not a question. Great skills, Andre. Thank you very much. It seems that my mom is watching. So mom, if it's from you, <laughs> thank you. Um, otherwise, hi team. I like to also get in touch for partner opportunities. Amazing, a lot of partners, founder of Element. Hello. Okay, Dubai, great. We'll reach out, let's discuss. Amazing, uh, we're really glad uh, that uh, uh, you wanna join. So five minutes, I assume, Please tell me a bit more about your YT Zaros platform. 
Yvonne, do you want to touch on that? Probably the last question, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so uh, if there's something you can share, yeah, yeah. Well, YD Zara's platform, um, as as of my knowledge, is a platform that is like uh, the, probably the question generates from a person who either is uh, from a company that are one of our early adapters who are actually launching this, but but uh, or, or some people who are working on the both open source or inside project of YD Zora's. So YD Zora's is our other venture that is uh, currently a little bit, uh, as of my knowledge, a little bit like uh, early to uh, talk very widely about, but uh, if like it is someone who has interest in terms of, let's say working with data, working with, uh, uh, High performance workloads using YD Source project, please reach us separately. I'll, I'll, I'll even put it in other words, since we still we we need to wrap up wrap up. In April in Stockholm, there will be another AI conference where our YT Zaros team will be attending. So if you're ever in Sweden, uh, come and visit us. We'll have people from the YT Zaros team that will be presenting their product that uh, will be there and ready for a talk. In case you're interested, we're always happy to explore new opportunities uh, again. So other, sorry, we're not able to finish all the questions. However, I do see that there are a couple of few uh, left. Anyway, as a summary, mm, first of all, our platform, super powerful, as you can see, training tens of billions of parameters on us is definitely a challenge, but also it turns out to be quite a successful solution. But it's not just generative AI startups that benefit from this. It's of course AI platforms. It's of course LLM developers and producers. And it's of course research centers as well that require how uh, high performance computing. How do they benefit from this? Again, top tier GPUs from partnership with NVIDIA. Simplified operations, as Pavel mentioned, having this transparency and support 24-7 is critical. And uh, of course, cost. I mean, we're all here in the business and business are made for profits. So consider your costs compared to AWS and everybody else. Uh, we are at least two times cheaper. Well, as, well, from the public price at least, but it's not that hard. Why is not it? It's not that hard. Well, because uh, we manage everything from our hardware to the cloud services that we provide. So we're controlling the full uh, cost uh, structure, which provides us with a good opportunity to actually provide the users with powerful yet cost efficient infrastructure for their not only training needs, but also for inference uh, and uh, everything else. And since we're running out of time, uh, I'd like to end by thanking you all for joining our first webinar. We really appreciate your time. Uh, wish you all a very good weekend. And we, of course, welcome all new uh, projects on our platform. Uh, so if you have something that you would like to discuss, just simply contact us, reach out, and we can arrange a free proof of concept for you, give more info on any use case that we offer, any product that we offer. As you see, we're very transparent and we're looking forward to building a very uh, nice AI-centric cloud with you together. Uh, in the end, I'd also like you to uh, vote uh, for, uh, for, for your feedback. I mean, uh, how well did you think the webinar went uh, from one to five? I know that my mom will definitely rate it as a five, but she's biased. So your objective feedback will help us improve in the future. Otherwise, thank you all for joining and I wish you all a happy Friday, wherever you are. Thank you very much. For being a great host, Andre. Thank pleasure. you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks all right. everyone for listening. Yes, thank, thank you all. You, everyone. The, it's an honor to have you and good luck with your endeavors. Yeah, bye-bye. All right, cheers.